I'm kind of torn between leaving it as it is where it's working perfectly or completely recapping it on this board as well. I think there's 11 capacitors on this board, something like that. I'm tempted to, it won't take me very long to do it. So I pulled this board out anyway, replaced some of the caps. I haven't replaced all of them. I've replaced all the smaller caps like the 10 microfarad and the 1 microfarad and the 2.2 which are in here. Replaced all those. I left the larger ones, the medium and large ones intact. I tested them all. They all tested fine. I haven't tested the ones I pulled out but they're probably fine too based on the fact they're all Nichicons and stuff like that and the ones on the other side were all perfect. They're probably fine anyway but I did the smaller ones because they're cheap and it's not a big deal. The larger one I've left in I've marked them all with a cross on top of them to show I haven't replaced those ones so if I do have issues in this in the future I can open it up and go okay I should replace those caps which I haven't done yet. We'll see if it goes still. It may need recalibrating now I've done some of these caps but it seems to be okay. Let's try it out. I've got power applied. So open first. It's good. Short it. That's good. Okay, let's test it to some capacitors. So that's the uh, 50 volt. 50 volt. So one microfarad 50 volt. We'll do that one first. Yes, sir. Hmm, probably okay. Let's do um, one microfarad. Let's put it in there. And let's go 10 percent. Just so we've got some tolerances in there. Alright, do it again. I should then say good or bad. Yep, good now. Value 1 microfarad, really good. And leakage. Good. So that cap was still fine. As I was expecting, I was expecting these caps to still be okay based on how all the other ones were. And there's a 2.2 here somewhere. Is that 50 volt as well? I think it was. Yep, 2.2, 50 volt. Yes, are good. Capacitance good. Leakage good. Okay, let's do 25 volt and 10 microfarad. Which are what all these ones are. And the same respect needs to be okay as well because these are these high quality caps. They're only 85 degree rated, but they are Nichicons, so. Good, good, good. Why is that beeping? <laughs> really? That was interesting. <laughs> I didn't know it beeped. I mean, I saw the beeper in here, but I didn't know why it was there. That's curious. I wonder why it did that. It says, stop testing, protection circuit or fuse is open. Well, it wasn't, because as soon as I touched the probes together, it was working, so. Curious, okay. Maybe I took the, the capacitor off at just the wrong time. It upset it. All right, do this again. So, ESR. Good. Capacitor. Good. Leakage. Good. That's interesting. We'll check this out. There is still voltage there. That's why it's beeping. So I think one of these relays are playing up. I might have to look at the list in more detail and see which one it is. I do actually have spare relays for the white one. I've got a couple of those. Anyway, let's do the leakage again. Okay, no beeping this time. It was still beeping, I gave it a tap. And then the problem went away. So there's a bad connection either on the relay or on the actual resistor which is supposed to sink the current away. Yeah, that's the white relay which is doing that switching there. So if there's a problem, it would be that white relay, which I have already pulled apart and cleaned. 
could still be an issue with that. I might have to replace that one if the cleaning it hasn't done the job. I'm going to pull the top of that relay back off again and have another look at that. We'll do it after we've tested this last capacitor. Get that testing out of the way. Right, yes, sir. Didn't say good, did I? Alright, look, let's count again. Yeah, see? Dodgy connection somewhere. Didn't say good though, did I not program it again properly? I did turn the power off. Yep, there's a 10. It's not saying real that's good or bad. Oh, because I didn't turn that back on. Here we go. Here you go. Right. There's two relays here, and the other one next to which is L3, that might be doing that switching, I can't quite tell. I can see that one moving in that leakage mode. Yeah, both relays are switching. I'm not sure which one's doing the discharging, I think it's the white one. Potentially, anyway. It's behaving again now. I'll pull the top of that white relay off. Get another clean. Something's not quite 100% there, and that's not what I want. I want it to be 100%. Anyway, that capacitor tested okay as well, so all those caps I took out look alright. Let's get this relay cover back off again. Have a close look at this. I mean, I did clean it, but does it look like it's switching okay or not? What I might do is actually watch it when it's powered up. I don't have a lead connected to it, it shouldn't matter. Yep, so that white relay set me switching. I'll show you that actually if I can. See it all praying? Work in unison, and it goes on, and the white one turns off, and then the other one turns off. So I need to look at that in more detail on the circuit diagrams and see which one's supposed to be discharging that capacitor through that big resistor bank on the back. Because whichever one that is, that's the one that's playing up. Right, so I'm going to replicate this manually. I've taken the top of this relay off, it all looks fine. I don't know. I am better get it to consistently do it, or even repeat it, so I can only do it by artificially doing this. So if I do a test here, 25 volts I've got set to, that relay will close. I'll set the paper in there, release it, and it will lie out because it's not making it, right? See that? There we go, that is actually promising. That actually confirmed that that relay there wasn't quite working because I pulled the paper out and it still didn't make. First level of success. Right, so right now it should be beeping because the paper's blocking it. Right, it should stop when I pull it back out because the voltage then drops. But that confirmed that this relay is the problem because I pulled the paper out and it still did it. Finally, right. Right, now the voltage actually goes through L3 and L2, this is L2. It could also be L3, but the fact that L2 then didn't close when I pulled the paper out, it's that one. So that's fine. I might just give it a bit more of a severe cleaning and see if it comes right from that. Worst case, I do have a brand new relay sitting here I can put in there, but I'd rather rescue what's already in there than replace it if I have to. So I'll just give it a bit more of a thorough clean. Now on the actual bar of the relay at the top here, it's got like a bar that goes this direction. 
on the common of the relay the bar goes that way so it's actually like this sort of system and same on the bottom one so it's like two bars like this and then this one goes up and down between them like that so it's got quite a small contact area in reality I've just given it a really good clean up on that top one trying to like run the paper round so it's going with that bar because this arm actually moves side to side so it actually got a bit of sideways movement I don't know if you can see it on camera or not I'll try and show it on camera see it's got a little bit of movement side to side try and show you it there you go so that sideways movement there that could be part of the issue but it's making it contact in different places and when it's in the wrong place it does badly so you know I'll give it a clean I'll set it for 25 volts again let's give it another go Do is push it sideways. It's only twenty five volts, so I don't mind touching it. Push it the other way. Okay. Yeah, it's not quite sure if it's this wobbling side to side is causing the problem. Well, hopefully that's it, because that hasn't done it again since then. Yeah, I think it's given it a really good clean's done the job. Yeah, okay, I'm pretty confident that's good now. I'm actually going to set this up on my desk here. as one of my bits of desk equipment, which is going to be permanently attached to my desk. Did I need to recap this? Probably not. I'm not convinced the capacitors were an issue in this. But at least I know that the ones I've done are done. And there's a it was that seven left in the bottom board which I haven't done. There's also one on the back of the front panel which I did. So it seems to be working fine. Now I've cleaned those relays and bits and pieces like that. So clean the relays, reset your connectors, cleaning the gunk off the boards that residue that was left on there, and recapping has restored it. Don't think the recapping is what actually fixed it. I think doing the connectors and cleaning it is probably what did most of it. If I really wanted to diagnose and figure out exactly what's causing a problem, I would have done it in stages. You know, I would have done the relays, probably would have cleaned the connectors first, reseated all the connectors, tested it, cleaned the relays, tested it, pulled the boards out and inspected, and cleaned that residue off and then tested it, and then finally would have recapped it if that hadn't solved it. So that's what I probably should have done, but it would have taken much longer, and I just wanted to, like, restore it basically I like to do restorations and, and bring things back so I can trust this for a period of time now obviously I've got those seven capacitors I haven't replaced was it or eight capacitors kind of anyway on the bottom there at least I know that if it does play up I could look at those ones but that's power supply stuff and it's not really a problem I mean I tested them in circuit they measured fine so I'm pretty confident they're right I mean they are niche cons as well they are high quality caps and the fact that not a single one of these other caps I pulled out has failed gives me confidence that the other ones that are still in there are still good, really. So, not so worried about it. I want to replace this power supply. So this is a 117 volt power supply. I'm 240 volt here. Now, I do actually have a little power brick which I was going to potentially modify. I kind of don't want to destroy this power brick though, because this is like original. It comes with it, so it's like, I don't really want to cut the lead off and, and you know, disable the supply and say it's no good because it's it's part of the equipment, you know. I like to keep things original, but that said, I can't keep this as it is. So I've got a, another same core, I've got the LC77, which I mentioned before, which I've done videos about as well. That was a bit more extensive, that one, I think. Um, that's got a little power brick that came with it, which is fine. I might use that on this. Also, I've got another power brick which I could put on it, but the thing is, this bloody connector. This is the problem, it's this 3 pin IEC, right? this little mini IEC connector it's called, I think. So you can see the shape of that. 
I need one of these. If I can get one of these plugs, then maybe I wouldn't need to destroy this power brick. If I can get one of these, even if it's got a lead on it or whatever. I mean, I've had a quick look around, I couldn't find one. But if I can get one, then it could mean that I wouldn't have to worry about destroying this power brick or modifying the unit to accept a different kind of socket or something. I like to get things original if I can, in that way, you know. It's a shame that, you know, it's a bit of history, I suppose. I'm going to put this on my desk now, somehow. I'm not quite sure how. There's the space I've got to put it in. Do you see the space that's going to go in? Can you see it? Yeah, me neither. But what I'm going to do, I've got this Heathkit IT12 here. Here's IT12. Um, that capacitor tester there. I'm going to retire that. That's I've already refurbished this. This has been done completely. All the caps done, everything. Else. So that's like you know new. I'm going to retire that. Put that out in my other room. Put it in storage. I can then move my power supply over a little bit here. Drop this UPS down next to the power supply, and fit this on top of the power supply. I need to find some of my little trinkets and stuff here. I might need to see what I'll do about that. But I can fit it here if I lose that. Which is a shame because I quite like that being there. But, um, you know, this replaces that anyway. The money from Patreon and YouTube memberships helped to buy this piece of equipment that contributed to it to allow me to do a video about it and actually edit to my desk. So, thank you much to my existing supporters. They helped me to, to buy this. Amongst other things, numerous other pieces of equipment have been contributed to by my Patreon and YouTube member supporters. So thank you everyone. If you want to help support the channel, click on that link over there. Other videos to watch down below there. The subscribe link over here. There's a Patreon support link over there, about there somewhere. Click on that to help you buy things like this. Catch you later.